Hi, hello, my name is Ramida. This is me and welcome to my channel. And if you're new here, I am a cloudscape, cityscape, oil painter. We're in my studio right now, so everything behind me is some of my work. And yeah, this week we're just gonna continue on working on that purple gray cloudscape that we started last week. It was turning out pretty good where uh, I was starting basically top to bottom like I usually do with a nice large brush and we're just just working at it adding more and more colors more and more pigments this week we're gonna get there we're hopefully gonna finish it from the pace that we're going yeah so it's looking like I am trying to speed through this really fast because on July 25th of this month I am going to be having my very first solo exhibition it's called the flaming twilight hour I came up with the name and everything that's how official it is is that i was able to come up with a name it was so exciting it is located at the central gallery which is inside of the burton bar public library here in downtown phoenix right off of central it's a big big old building free parking the central gallery is on the the ground floor as you enter it's, yeah, so, so simple, so easy. And yeah, it's my very first solo exhibition. I am very excited. But as you see, most of the stuff in the studio is basically everything that I have. So in order to prepare for it even more, I really want to just paint as much as I can before July 25th. Actually, technically before that because I have to install it and, and all the, the prerequisites that come beforehand, obviously. But yeah, up until then, I, I'm trying to paint as much as I can to have as many paintings ready and prepared for the show so that it's, uh, it's just full of my work. You really can't have too much work. So yeah, mark your calendars July 25th and it'll be open to the public until September 30th of this year, 2022. So yeah, it is going to be a long one. There will be an opening reception opening reception on uh, August's first Friday which I believe is August 5th. Oh my gosh, I did not write this down. But yeah, August's first Friday will be like the opening reception. So yeah, I just wanted to tell you that before we get into it. But yeah, enough of my my little jibber jabber and my update and my little reminder for you. Let's uh, continue working on this painting. over Amita back and uh, today I wanted to talk about I don't know trying to enjoy adult things since I know I'm 24 well I, as of recording this I'm 24 about to turn 25 I've, I've lived on my own for a bit especially during college and and now I live with my husband and then but well, like one thing that does is never fun is just cleaning oh, just like overall cleaning but also I don't live in like a pigsty I mean you've seen my you've seen the vlogs you know I don't I don't uh sugarcoat anything Wh whatever you see is just how I live I, I like to think that I I don't keep the place too messy or too cluttered my my husband's very he he doesn't like a lot of clutter like he's always been like more of a organizational kind of guy he's not one to like wipe down like a ton of services or whatever like that's not the kind of cleaning but just like like oh this is where I keep this and this is where I keep that like kind of person that's my husband and I love that about him like it's it's very nice to to see a man who <laughs> is not uh not super messy 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, just dudes. Okay, all to say is that I got us a Dyson vacuum. I know, I know the 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 term Dyson has a lot of weight to it. When I told people that I got a Dyson, they were like, "Oh wow!" Like, "Oh yeah," <laughs> it's because it's an expensive vacuum brand. What what actually inspired me to get one was actually watching another YouTuber. Her name is uh, Jade the Libra. She does like Halloween decor content. I know that's not art. I I, I do art content, so it feels really weird. She shouting out another YouTuber that's not art related or like not in my field but I love I love Halloween like uh, I've said this whenever our 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 daughter's gonna be born in October so she's going to she's gonna be a little a Halloween uh, baby so uh, I just I just really love Halloween so I love watching Halloween decor videos and uh, Jade also does cleaning videos like she'll just like deep clean her bedroom, her closet, or her car even, and so she always pulls out her little handy dandy Dyson, and Uh, I just got inspired to to actually buy one, and it was not an easy purchase, like, I've been thinking about it for a long time. Sometimes, I just, all this to say, I think it's a good idea that if you think about something for a really long time, and you, uh, even though it's going to be a hard decision, it's probably a, a good decision if you're if you constantly are thinking about it. Yeah, I'm, I I had the money to to buy a, a vacuum, and I had a feeling that if I bought a nice, good quality vacuum, that it would inspire me to actually clean and use it more. And it's it's really true. Like we've had it for several weeks now. Like I think I got it at the beginning of June uh, before uh, we went on all, our big vacation. Uh, yeah it helps especially with like kitty litter like Like, we have like unscented granular clay based kitty litter for the kitties and they just kick that litter out of the litter box all the time and And sweeping is just not that fun especially when you have to get down and you have to put them in the little dustpan and so just busting out the Dyson and just like just vacuuming it up for a couple seconds like it just seems so much more easy of course the kitties hate it the kitties hate the vacuum duh they're cats they're gonna hate anything that makes loud noises <laughs> and moves around you know and is a threat to them at all but uh they're, they're fine like honestly like see my mom go through many many vacuums you know, throughout you know, her her mom a uh, lifetime of of being a mom and cleaning and vacuuming and the, it is so quiet it's so small and so light and so quiet and so all we have to do is just like empty it out like every time we're we're doing a big vacuum or or something and boom and then it's it's done it's clean and, and so it's so easy to to handle this is this is it is not sponsored in any way of course i am way too tiny to actually get a sponsor and be sponsored by dyson oh my gosh like what what a i'd be so flattered i don't know yeah so all this to say if you think about something for a really long time and uh it's really heavy on your mind maybe just get it it might actually be a good idea especially when it's like a cleaning product (laughs) like cleaning is always good and if you have really crummy cleaning supplies then you're not gonna want to clean and that's so true i (laughs) if, if i've learned anything it's like like, yeah, actually get get good stuff. Get good quality stuff, especially for stuff that you don't want to do, like cleaning. <laughs> so that's my little PSA for the day. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, uh, back to fading. Oh, 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 oh,
Whoa, it's me chiming in. Uh, just uh, <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Oh, my husband calls these bangs my my 2012 bangs. He has seen too many photos of me back when I had terrible bangs. Well, yeah, I'm chiming in because <laughs> uh, I just wanted to tell you guys about what I did the other day, and I we went to an AJR concert. It, this was the first concert that I had been to since the pandemic and it was one of those things I didn't realize it until we were sitting we had our seats and like the music was playing and I was like wait a minute I haven't had to experience this since pre-pandemic and it just it just felt really really fun just to just to do something where you're part of a big group of people that are really happy to be hearing all this like just like really fun music and like the people sitting in front of us were like these like at least five maybe seven teenage girls who they they acted like mm, I, I don't want to be mean. i don't wanna, i don't want to sound mean uh they it was like their very first concert and they're just like screaming their head off recording and singing and just like bouncing around and it just reminded me a lot about when i went to like my very first concert as like a tween it, it was jonas brothers by the way i was a huge jonas brothers nerd as a tween and that's what i was obsessed with just just by the way i don't need to share this with you guys i don't need to be this vulnerable and just tell you my secrets but i was a jonas Brothers girl joe was my favorite <laughs> my favorite brother yeah so just seeing them really excited about going to this agr concert maybe maybe agr is their jonas brothers oh my gosh i didn't think about that oh my gosh oh what a revelation <laughs> i mean good for them good for them so obviously i can't really show you too much footage of the actual concert because uh because it's their music um but it was very, it was very fun and i think her baby girl really enjoyed it too because she was she was moving around in there i think like i think the vibrations from the speakers probably were just like she was just like rocking out in there i think <laughs> it's pretty fun yeah and so i wonder i especially want to bring up the specific agr concert because like one of their songs i think it was i think their song weak off of their click like click album it has a very like very specific i have memory tied to it you know like little core memory if you will so back when my husband and i were very first started to date uh, I, he's, he's a very shy guy, so um, our mutual friends had to introduce us, and we did a couple, like, group dates at the very beginning to kind of, like, like kind of like icebreakers. It's just, like, it's just so much easier when you have a group of people that you know and are, are really talkative to, like, really get your personality out, especially if you're you're trying to, to date someone that you're possibly interested in. And so one of the very first dates that we went on, our mutual friends, Friends, Kevin and Erica carpooled us to our date. I think this is when we went to Dave and Buster's. <laughs> I think it was. I think it was that date. And so yeah, big group date to Dave and Buster's. All of us playing games and like uh, eating a meal together it was pretty fun. And so yeah, we're together in the car. And I remember we Christian and I sat in the back seat. Kevin and Erica were in the front. We didn't like you know we're in the car. We didn't really talk at all. But then so so Kevin's trying to like put some tunes on to try to like ease the mood if that makes sense. And he puts on Week by AGR, which if you've heard the song uh, a little bit into the song there's like a kind of like it, like the beat kind of drops if that makes sense like that's just maybe not like the beat kind of drops but like it picks up and no thank you it's how it should have gone i should stay strong And so I very distinctly remember me, I'm a huge dork and I'm trying to loosen up for this date and I like, I'm, I, I, I definitely rock out in the car, just like, re like really head banging, you know, to the song. And I distinctly remember Christian laughing, like, <laughs> uh, not like, like at me, but like he thought he, he, he understood that I was trying to be funny 
and was totally like respecting my my awkwardness and like you know my little dorkiness and so i remember that being a very pivotal moment in the date being like okay like he he likes you know me being a dork you know i'm i'm a pretty big dork i I just am i don't know if you noticed (laughs) <laughs> so so him recognizing me being a dork and was totally down for it I remember that being a very pivotal moment to being like okay like this is this is going somewhere because I've been on dates before with guys that are totally not down for the dorkiness and that's a no-go if you're gonna date this dorky little 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 girl <laughs> I don't know. It was just like so. It was pretty fun to to go to this concert, and my husband was there, and he was. Now we're four years later, and I'm we're married. Uh, I'm pregnant with his kid, and so it was just very nice hearing that song live, and just being like, oh yeah, like that was a very you know pivotal moment. I don't think Christian remembers anything of it at all. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that was it. Uh, I just I just, I just remember that the other day going to this like fun concert post uh, pandemic and so yeah so that's enough of me <laughs> jibber jabbering uh, and let's get back to painting I forget I want to give a little update on how the pregnancy's going how our little baby girl is doing I feel like I gotta do at least like a little update in each of these videos so that I can look back and and see how stuff was progressing at this part in the pregnancy well some really fun stuff was that on June 1st Christian was able to feel the baby kick for the first time. It was like, oh, such a beautiful day. Uh, I had been feeling her, like, move around. I think I said, like, when I was in the end of the first trimester, people were asking me, or most of my nana, <laughs> who loves babies, kept asking me if I could feel uh, the baby move. And, like, by that point, she was, like, only, I think, four or five inches long. And... Oh. So if I felt anything, it was just like, I think just her growing, you know, like, you know, I got a, I got a whole organ down there that's like trying to expand, you know, and trying to move around. But now, you know, it, it was like, yeah, June 1st, she was finally moving enough that Christian could put his hand on my belly while we're just sitting there chilling over by the couch. And he felt her kick and it was like, it was pretty crazy because like, you know, I could feel the kicks too. You know, it's it's my body that she's inside. And, and like, it just, it was such a big kick that it felt like she was like trying to communicate, you know, she her. was trying to communicate with him. And so that was pretty, it was pretty crazy. Oh yeah, so June 1st. And, and the other day I did finally have my ultrasound appointment. I think in one of my previous uh, painting vlogs, I said that we had it scheduled so that Christian could come and like actually see her on the tv screen you know in in ultrasound form you know all black and white and and grainy and stuff so we finally had it 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 was it was pushed back a a couple times but uh she was moving around like a ton like she was giving the ultrasound tech a hard time to try to get all those pictures because you because uh if you've never had an ultrasound done before with a with a baby uh they they have to take pictures of every little thing about her like the circumference of her head five million different angles of her heart beating and like her bones like each of like the big main like, like bone uh parts of her skeleton you know so we had to take all these pictures and she was just moving around so much that she wouldn't stay still for the camera, you know, the ultrasound picture thing to, to take the picture. And she was just giving uh, the ultrasound tech such a hard time. I kept apologizing. I was like, I'm so sorry. Like, I, I, I can tell, like me, I, I know I can feel her moving, you know, all the time. And it's just like really, it was really funny to like see on the screen how much she kicks and that's what I feel, you know? It's like she has to do a pretty big kick 
And then I'm like, oh, you know, like, oh, there she is, you know. And so uh, it's making me a little scared for when she gets bigger and those her her muscles get stronger and she's going to kick places that will actually hurt me. <laughs> right now it doesn't hurt. And uh, speaking of hurting, the ultrasound check was, you know, so they, they got to put a lot of pressure on, you know, my belly in order to get that camera to be close enough to her so that um, they could see her and get those, like, pictures and nice, uh, good enough quality that they can actually detect, like, information from. And I'm laying there, and I'm on my back. You know, the ultrasound text, she's she's right there next to me with uh, the machine and squishing on my belly. And I started to feel faint. Like, I was going to pass out. And I, I don't get, I wasn't squeamish. I wasn't, like, freaked out about, you know, the little, the little bones in her body or organs pumping. You know, some people are a little weird like that. Um, I, I'm not. I was actually thought it was really cool to see her little bones. <laughs> that feels really weird to say out loud. But... Yeah, I wasn't squeamish at all, and I can. I started to feel faint. Like my heart was beating fast. I was lightheaded. I and then I started to feel see stars, and then I had to tell the ultrasound check. I like I, I'm feeling faint. Like I, uh, you know, and I didn't know what to do because I'm already laying down. And usually when you feel faint, that's what you want to do. You want to lay down, you know, like usually you're doing something or, or you're in a position where, you know, blood flow is not happening. And so the ultrasound tech, she stopped, you know, she took the device off of me and she ran and got me a cup of water and like a towel, like a wet towel to put on my head. And she told me to lay on my side, you know, like I usually do when I go to bed. That's what they tell you when you're pregnant. Uh, do not lay on your back when you go to bed because something about the baby, is, especially when she gets bigger, she lays down on a, a very important like, blood flow, maybe like artery, vein thing, somewhere maybe like in like the back, you know, like the lower back area. And so she can cut off, you know, blood circulation to, to me. You know? And so I'm thinking that's what happened was that I was laying there on my back. And I was feeling fine, you know, totally. Yeah, I'm like, I, I, yeah, I was feeling fine. But I think with like, because she was squirming so much during the ultrasound, the, the appointment was taking longer than usual to get all those photos. And then the ultrasound tech had to like, m like put more pressure on my belly to get those pictures that she was able to and I think I was just losing blood flow and I you know started to feel faint so we did the rest of the ultrasound appointment on my side I I, I felt immediately fine as soon as I wasn't laying on my back uh, you know the ultrasound tech and my husband were like do you feel okay I was like yeah I feel fine now uh, I was like uh, I, I I fainted um, multiple times before I'm and you know not out. getting that like blood flow to my brain body whatever and I I just faint. I, I fainted a couple times, so I knew exactly that I was going to faint there on the on the sound table. Oh, I, I can laugh about it now because I'm totally fine, yeah. and so uh, I'll definitely be telling my doctor about that the next time I see her. <laughs> but, yeah, other than, other than that, I think uh, she she weighed pretty much in the ideal spot. Like she she's weighing exactly how much she's supposed to weigh. Like right now, as of recording, it's a little bit later. And she is just a little over a pound, like a, a pound, two ounces is the approximation that they, they did in the, the ultrasound um, the, through what they can detect from the devices. I don't know how that works, but that's what they were able to detect. And that's exactly how much she's supposed to weigh right now. I'm pretty sure according to, to my, my pregnancy apps. Which is great. Like, uh, I, I, I'm just I'm just here with my, my belly and I can feel her and that's about it. And so it's it's when we get to go to these appointments and they check on me and they measure me and then they're like yep you're, you're good you're in the window I, I just feel really reassured because I, I feel okay and I, I just I don't want to be too ignorant of what's going on with with her and me so it's, it just feels really assuring when you know everything's going well you know at these uh, four week appointments yeah <laughs>
right, so there you go. The painting's pretty much finished. I uh, Usually I would think that I might go in and do some little touch-ups, maybe add some a little bit more details, but this video is already super, super long, so probably I'll probably do some little touch-ups in probably my next art vlog so that uh, if, if you see any changes to it, I did touch it up a little bit, but it's more or less done. Like if I had to throw this in a gallery right now, I'd be pretty proud of it, <laughs> you know? But yeah, I think that's a good place for it to stop. The, the whole thing is covered with paint and yeah, so I think it's it's pretty much finished. If you like the this new way that I'm uh, painting uh, and vlogging, I got, I got a ton of footage. It was, it was a, ton, a ton of footage. <laughs> that I really had to edit down, but if you really like it, then I'll continue to do it the, for you. I'll do it for you, uh, but only you. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, if you uh, like this video, make sure to give it a like. Uh, subscribe for more painting vlogs because I have a ton more to come. And I'll see you next time. Okay, goodbye.